So we have some wonderful, amazing um, history to share with you guys today. I'm walking right on by a couple of them. Now these are some heavy hitter hitters that I'm walking by. Um, but I think um, I didn't want to share too much about these because we're going to do a story on them in a couple of weeks. So let's start at 1001 and 1003. My husband last week had a, a person, he's walking backwards you guys, and he had a person helping him. So this week is gonna be a little challenging. So you're gonna see me giving him a little direction. That's what I'm doing, okay? <laughs> so we're standing at 1001 and 1003. Now he's gonna back up a little bit. There's a car, so be careful. This was one of my spots back in the day. Who knows about Lee Style Shop? This bad boy opened a long time ago, like 90 years ago. <laughs> it was opened by a Jewish immigrant named Morris Cohen. Mr. Cohen worked for Schiff Shoe Corporation before starting his own business. Mr. Cohen's brother sold bedding out of the truck of his car in front of the Lee site. That would be approximately right here, okay? And then in 1960, Lee's became a corporation after he had died. And then Mr. Tom Campbell took over until it closed in the early 2000s. I remember Lee's, I remember going to Lee's. Lee's of course wasn't my go-to shop um, considering it was made up of a little more, uh, I'd say um, traditional wear. But what I liked about Lee's is that whenever I needed something really quick, and I didn't have time to go all the way out to town and country in the 80s, I could run over here to Lee's. They had stockings, they had shoes, they had hats. Any quick thing that you may need, Lee's was the spot, okay? Now keep in mind, in the 40s and 50s, Lee's was almost somewhat like a Kmart. It was that boutique that people went to to buy their Sunday's best hats or their Sunday shoes. Um, and it became a staple in the community. Many people in the community worked here. Maybe you had family members that worked here. I actually remember someone giving me a gift card for my first husband and I's wedding to Lee's uh, Fashion Wear. And I'll never forget that, just because I hadn't been there in a long time, and it was good to come back considering I had a gift card. And I got married in 92 the first time. Yeah, 92 the first time. And I had a gift card here, so I know they were still in operation at that time. Okay, next we have... This is, this is actually all of Lee's, 1001, 1003. And now we're coming to 999 Mount Vernon Avenue. And that's actually right here. See this little boutique right here? It's so cute, so cute. It's actually called Christopher's, I think, now. Yep, Christopher's Hair Now. And it was in the 40s and 50s, Logan's Beauty Shop, owned by Arthela Logan, who was actually an Eastern star. So I like to mention those type of things because where there is a leader, they're normally uh, taking part in different parts it rarely stops with just doing one thing. So me being a leader, I'm not only involved with making creative videos, but I'm also the founder of Greed, as well as, hey baby, that's why we have history in the streets. How y'all doing? <laughs> Everybody loves the camera. <laughs> so again, these are the type of things that we learn um, as we are learning more about our history. So let's move to 997. 997 was the former site of a draft board office. In 1940, it was a savings and loan. And there actually was an old bank vault in the basement when Mr. Wiley, who we're gonna talk a little bit about Mr. Wiley. Mr. Wiley was a black businessman that was here on Mount Vernon who owned several of these businesses. And then actually in 1994, there was a film made here. 
And you can follow up with that film and Google it online, uh, better known as the Lost Treasurer's Found Project. And it was created by the Columbus Landmark Foundation. Again, that's a good source for you to learn more about history and to follow up on this particular area of Mount Vernon. I may not know everything, but I'm gonna provide you with the resource for those of you that want to dig just a little bit deeper. <laughs> History in the streets. <laughs> okay. So now we have, be careful. Sorry. This actually was Dr. Kaplan's office. Down uh, upstairs, if you guys are familiar with Dr. Kaplan. This was a furniture store at one time when it was originally built in 1914. Now keep in mind, we were in transition, moving from a white community to a black community. So many of the white communities, especially if they were Jewish, remained in the neighborhoods and they benefited our community. We purchased from them. They had um, given us opportunities for employment. And if you're familiar with the Carlisles, Carlisles were here and they were also located at 445 West, uh, North High Street. Now, when we talk about two different locations in two different communities, two different business locations in two different communities, can you tell me why they would have two different locations in two different communities? I'll let you guys tell me. The main reason any business wants to uh, circulate their business or product or service to different audiences is because they want to sell to different audiences. They ultimately had a business here for the black community and they also had a business on North High Street for the white community. Hey, you know, business is business sometimes, right? So I love that type of stuff. Okay, so we're here at 981. If you notice right now, it appears to be a daycare. 981 and 977. In 1994, it was an outreach center. It used to be the Wallace Brothers Hardware Store that later moved to Mount Vernon and Miami. The Wallace Brothers was a cold-blooded family. They also had a band. The hardware stores were popular businesses at the time. Many of us are familiar with hardware stair stores. Maybe you can tell me uh, what hardware store you and your family shopped at when you were small. Did you walk to the Wallace Brothers hardware store? Or did you go to the Sutherland Brothers hardware stores? What was your hardware of choice? Now, the Wallace Brothers also, as I mentioned, had a band and you're gonna listen to a couple of its beats. The song was called, What You Feel Is What You Get. What you feel is what you get. <laughs> you like that? Now the Wallace brothers were Walter, Jeffrey, and DeFrost. Um, they graduated from Dr. Ted Turner's music program at East High School in 1955. I'll tell you, East High School is cold-blooded, not only for it being a, a school that created legends and legacy, but it's a school that provided some beautiful resources for black people at a unique time, and I appreciated them. The band would later do background work for Aretha Franklin, The Temptations, and The OJs. <laughs> As I said, one of their favorite songs was What You Feel Is What You Get. Thank you, thank you, thank you to the Wallace Brothers in continuing our mission of not only being leaders in the community, but being artistic in our community and for our community. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, we're moving on. 977, we actually have and it's a part of the daycare as well. And it was another property of Mr. Wiley. His name was Carl Wiley. Um, and at that time, it was a dry cleaners. In 1993, it was a doctor's office. And upstairs, as you can notice, it's some apartments up there. Dual living, multi, 
uh, purpose living was very popular in the 20s and 30s considering that many small business owners would rent space or own the space above their franchise or their business because it was economical. And that's one thing that I think our businesses as we grow um, as a community, um, black people begin to emerge into bigger, big businesses. That's something that I think we may need to think about instead of using so much money on our private personal finances, we have to get back to the basics to build up that finance, and then at that point, we can build legacy. Sometimes we buy in two and three houses, and we have a business, and it's difficult to maintain that amount of money to pass on to the next generation. So I think this particular people were very, very smart at a very unique time, stockpiling that money. Um, I don't want to say what Tia Boston's um, uh, generational wealth was, but it definitely was something that I acknowledge and I admire. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Boston, for showing us what that means. Okay, 973. We over here in these streets, y'all. We in these streets. 973 was actually, there's some apartments upstairs, as you can see. And in 1994, this was used by Elijah Muhammad's followers. It appears to be something, it may be a home now, I don't know. Um, y'all want me to knock? I don't know what it is now, but y'all know I'm not afraid to at least knock on the door and see what it is. It appears to be a home, and if it's a home, it's a pretty cool home. I would love to live here. Okay, maybe we'll come back next time. Okay, I've only got a couple more that I need to show y'all. 969, here he is again. Doc, uh, Mr. Carl, I might as well call him Dr. Uh, entrepreneur. He's a very unique entrepreneur at a unique time. 969 was actually property of Carl Wiley. Uh, as I said, a black businessman who owned several businesses throughout the, on the street. Uh, and this actually was a health store. So what we have to keep in mind is many of these legends and people who created legacy not only did it as a opportunity for them, but they really did it to build the community up. They started businesses that was needed. They started, uh, they passed on these opportunities to their children because they didn't want it to stop. Their children are maintaining these conversations. And that's why it is we have history in the streets. Now every week I try to provide you with some type of historical foundation so that you can constantly learn. Why it is we do this? It's a part of green. Breathe is actually a, a organization that was birthed out of the protest and after the death of George Floyd. And we needed to provide you with something that made media fair, that told black stories, that told our truth, that told our history. Because again, when we tell our history, that's where our confidence comes, that's where we're able to build legends and ultimately create legacies, okay? So none of this that I do is in vain. Everything I do is to help you grow so that you and your children and your children's children can know where you come from and you can understand what black history is, local black history is in Columbus, Ohio. I again am Rita Fuller Yates. I'm your lifestyle expert, your historian, and your home girl. And we do this to help you. We will see you next week.